All right. Hello again, everyone. So tried several times to record this, and uh, I think I've got the lucky hand here finally. But <clears throat> I wanted to do a video discussing the vacuum system of the microscope here. Um, so now every vacuum system is going to be different on every microscope, obviously. Uh, there's going to be some similarities and whatnot. Um, but um, we're going to use the Thema C here as an example for this. Um, on, on all FEI slash Thermo Fisher systems, you're going to see a lot of similarities. You know, the user interface is going to be the same. So um, where can you, let's start by where can you find the vacuum system diagram. Come down here, find vacuum overview, and you can see your overview here. Right now, I have all the units in TOR. If you want to change this, find your vacuum control panel, wherever that is. You can, if it's not already over here, see, I can't because it's already here. So you can find it, click settings, and you can change the units. Um, log is a little bit, you know, the, they, they use this log because you can have a wide range of, you know, levels in vacuum, right? Many orders of magnitude. So that's why they have the log units. Um, basically, every time there's a 10% change, you're going to see a change in the log unit. So if you go from, say, you know, a 10% increase, that would be five to six. If it's a 10% decrease, it'd be five to four. Okay. I know this is how it works on the, on the Themis and the Talos, these newer ones. I'm not exactly sure if it's if it's quite that with the Techni. I think it still is with the older Technis and the older Titans, but I'm not entirely sure, so don't quote me on that. Um, but I prefer to leave it in Tor because Tor is Tor, right? Regardless of whether you're on a new microscope or an old microscope. So I took a screenshot of this already and pulled it up here, and I scrolled in here so we can actually see this a little better so it actually looks pretty decent right here um yes so we can see all the different gauges here and all the different elements perfectly right now um so your vacuum system is basically composed of a few different elements so you have pumps you have gauges you have valves and then you have the you know the the plumbing, if you will, right? The tubing and the chambers um, that you have throughout the system, okay? So if we start by considering like over here, what are these? These are all the different gauges on the system. So if you count all these up, there's 10, okay? So on the Themis alone, we have 10 different vacuum gauges. Um, so the, um, you know, if we start by just, let's start at the gun, and we'll work our way through this, okay? And we'll, and we'll cover each of these elements here and what these all are. So um, the gun, you'll notice, now the other thing you'll notice here is different colors, okay? So, and the and in the, um, the FEG area, you notice you don't have like a shade of blue. That's because you have SF6 in here. So they put yellow in there to denote that this is not the same as, um, everything else, right? Everything else, this is just normal, you know, air that you're pumping on, but up here you're, you're on SF6, okay? So as you go from this dark blue to this cyan or teal color, you're getting better in vacuum, okay? And then this is like an intermediary between here. So you actually see the three different colors to kind of show the three different um, levels of vacuum that the system um, has. So it's got what are called trip levels. So basically, once you get below the trip level for the dark blue, you're going to go to this next lighter blue. And then if you go below that, you're going to go to the teal color. Okay. Um, so the different pumps, there's three different kinds of pumps on here. You have ion getter pumps or IGPs. You have Pirani gauges, which are PIR. You have Pirani penning, which is PP. And you also and you have um, cold cathode gauge, which is CCG. So those are your four gauges: um, IGP, Ronnie Penning, um, Ronnie, and CCG. Um, as far as the 
pumps, you have three kinds of pumps. So you have IGPs um, or, or ion getter pumps. You have termomolecular pumps or TMPs, and you have pre-vacuum pumps or PVPs. There is another pre-vacuum pump to this one, uh, the TMP sub M, which is not shown in the diagram, but there is another one here, okay? And then the other thing you have are valves, okay? So the valves are these um, black uh, triangles that are either pressed together or separated. And you'll notice on some of these valves, there's a little T on them. So the ones with the Ts, these are manual only, okay? Um, meaning that they can't be actuated by software control. They have to be actuated by, you know, human um, human um, manipulation, okay? But you see here, there's a bunch of different valves present, okay? So those are the different elements here. So if we start up here with the defeg, right? So we have an ion getter pump for the feg. So the after the pump, you have a small letter which denotes what it's pumping, okay? So this is pumping the feg area. Then you have your accelerator area, and you have an IGP A for that. You then have a valve between the accelerator and the column, which is VAC. So all the valves have a capital V. Um, and then in the column, you have three different vacuum gauges. So you have a Pirani penning gauge um, at the top, you have an IGP in the middle and you have an IGP on the bottom and these all pump out different parts of the column, okay? So this PPCL, this is the column liner. Um, the IGPCO, this is column octagon. So as far as liner and octagon, if you go back here, you can see in your vacuum panel, you have reading for liner and octagon, okay? So that's what this means, the L and the O here. Um, so this, the IGP CO, this pumps on the specimen area. The IGP CL, this is column liner, this pumps um, far down lower in the column, okay? I think in the, um, in like the selected area aperture vicinity. Um, so this is, uh, you know, higher up the, lower down the column, so to speak, okay? Then you have another valve that isolates the column from the projection system. So when you when you open the column valves, you're opening literally these two valves. So right now, column valves are closed. So you have VCP for valve between column and projection. Your projection system has a cold cathode gauge to measure the pressure there. And your projection system is pumped by a turbo molecular pump, TMP sub P. Um, if you have to vent the projection system to do work on the cameras or something in there, you have a valve to do that to vent it to nitrogen. Your turbo molecular pump has a buffer tank um, behind it, um, which has its own vacuum gauge, which is a Pirani gauge. So this is Pirani buffer. And then you have a gauge here between the buffer tank and I'm, you know, I think the D here stands for diaphragm. I'm not entirely sure, but I believe that's what this is. So this is the valve between the diaphragm and the buffer. There's a diaphragm here associated with the column, and this is open right now. Um, the buffer tank is pumped out by a pre-vacuum pump or a roughing pump. So you have PVP sub P for projection um, right now, and the valve between those, so the valve between the buffer and the pre-vacuum pump. And then you have a Pirani gauge for the pre-vacuum itself, Pirani um, PV. So if we come back over here to the column area and we follow the lines that IGPCO and IGPCL are attached to, these take us to what's called the manifold. So there's a manifold here um, and there's a series of, there's two valves that go from the column to the manifold so that B MCO, manifold column octagon, and VMCL, manifold column liner. And then there is a gauge for the manifold. This is Pirani manifold. And then the manifold has a vent valve here. If you have to vent it, um, this is what you would use if you had to vent the gun, right? The, the valve to vent the gun is man manual, as you can see by the little T here. Okay, But that's what this is. And then you have a valve between the manifold and the other turbomolecular pump, um, specifically 
for the manifold of this does just well this does pump the manifold but it also pumps out the load lock area this is tmp sub m and again there's a pump roughing pump attached to this which is not shown so the airlock has its own gauge which is the pirani ll here um and if you follow this around you have so this little gray section here this is the airlock um area okay so when you're pumping out the airlock, this valve here, BLLT, is opened, and this is being pumped out. Once it's pumped out, this closes, and then when you insert the holder, you open up this valve. So this is the manual valve that has to be actuated manually to introduce the, um, the holder into the column. Okay? So I think that is everything here. And that is basically everything I wanted to cover as far as the vacuum system. So when you see these now, hopefully, um, you know, you'll have a little more confidence with what these all mean and understanding what they're doing. Um, and so I hope you found that useful. So, and uh, plan to do a couple more videos here while I have the computer set up. So, um, Please bear with me here and be on the lookout. All right. Thanks, everybody.